Hey, it's really good to be here. I was thinking, what's the biggest challenge for a presenter? Does anybody know? And I think the answer is to come in at 3 o'clock when the effect of coffee is wearing off, and then we all had a really nice lunch, and yeah, we're the last three speakers, so I hope you're all with me. I'm actually super excited to be here. I'm very, very grateful to have this chance. And I, uh, I'm originally from Argentina. I have been in Finland for six years and in Supercell for six years. I was working in player support and in vendor management. And then when Supercell started with the program for giving back, we call it Give Back, uh, inside Supercell, I was so excited to be a part of it. And I'm now working uh, with the Give Back team. So um, I was thinking, yeah, since I like a challenge, I'm going to start by asking a Finnish audience, <laughs> what could this number stand for? It can be anything. What do you guys think it is? Silence. <laughs> Finland's third biggest city. <laughs> oh, yes. Finland's third biggest city. Good, good guess. <laughs> Maybe. Any other thoughts? Mm. Could be, um, yeah, downloads for like <laughs> apps and games in our phones at this stage. Uh, but actually, 90,000 stands for uh, the hours that an average person will spend at work. And actually, the World Health Organization says that we will spend one third of our adult lives in work. So um, what does this mean for us? It means it's great because we get to play games in our offices and in our workplaces and make all of our friends jealous. But I guess my question is, is it enough to work uh, for this industry that we all feel passionate about? Is there something else that we can offer players, employees? Whoops. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> so, yeah. That's how efficient that talk was. Why CSR? Why even consider corporate social responsibility? And I know many of you are thinking, yeah, you know, it's easy enough for you, Maria, because you work in Supercell and you have the headcount and you have the funds for this, but many of us work in smaller studios. Is there really time for this? Is there really, you know, a place for this? And I would say the answer why you should consider it and why it's worth thinking about it is because it's important to consumers and in this case, players, and I will show you some numbers around that. And it's important to employees. People are beginning to care more and more about companies that give back and want to work for companies that give back. Oh, not again. <laughs> okay, I will not use the remote anymore. But uh, yeah, why, why players? So I chose to share this study uh, it's, uh, it has data from the US, and I, I chose this uh, on purpose because I think that the US is an important market for video games, and also the US leads the way in terms of giving back. So, I mean, the numbers speak for themselves, and you can all download the study, by the way. It's really, really interesting to look at it. Basically, the numbers say Americans believe in companies that give back, that take a stand. They will also make sure that you walk the talk. If you say something, if you say you stand for something, they will do the research and the due diligence, and they will really see if you are, you know, if you're serious about what you stand for. And very interestingly, 87% of Americans will purchase a product because a company advocated for an issue they cared about. So yeah, all is good, but how about home? Uh, I'm borrowing this slide from Milton. They did a great study. You can also download this from the internet. And uh, basically, Milton was asking Finnish, Swedish, and Estonians, you know, as consumers, how important is it for you that a company, you know, takes a stand? And uh, the red basically means important to different degrees. And we can see it's mostly red. 
Uh, they interviewed over 3,000 people. Employees, why is it important for employees? Um, we talk a lot about millennials and actually the data is super interesting because the younger people are, the more they wanna work for a company that gives back and that is involved in corporate social responsibility. And um, yeah, actually 64% of Americans won't take a job if the company doesn't have a, like CSR values. Uh, they, there's also an element about retention, like how do you retain that talent? And then many people uh, feel like, you know, they become also part of the community uh, and they are more aligned with cultural values of a company if the company is also, you know, contributing to society. Yeah, and then there's also an element of fulfillment. Like you're working really hard and you know that, you know, some of that profit or some of your hours or in any way your company is giving back, it also kind of, you know, feels good. How about home? So when you're evaluating a company as your current or potential employer, how important is it that that company takes a stance on important societal issues? And it's very important for Finns, Swedish, and Estonians. And very interesting, if you go and download the survey from Milton, you will see the age groups as well. And you will see what I mean with, you know, young people just really not being interested in working for companies that don't give back. So, this is all good, Maria. Like, okay, we wanna think about it. We care about players. We care about employees. What are we gonna do? We don't have necessarily a huge budget. Uh, you know, our plates are full. Uh, we are super busy as it is. Many of us work weekends even. How are we gonna consider this? And I would say, um, just find your own way. Uh, there's no one size fits all. And uh, for us in Supercell, what really uh, made a difference was to involve employees. Um, when we started our program, we, we had a survey for all employees and we asked if we were to give money, if we were to be involved with different programs, what do you care about? Number one was education, which is why uh, for Supercell, we support a lot of programs around education. But there's also like, of course there's corporate grants, but there's also employee matching, matching gifts. Lots of employees already give back. And then there are very good platforms. We use one called Benevity. And you can just match as a company whatever your employees are giving, or of course up to a certain, certain degree as well. Uh, you can also, through the platform, people can load their volunteer hours and you can give them like a grant on those hours that they can donate to any of the nonprofits on the platform. There's also volunteering and, and I will talk a little bit more about that. Products like there have been amazing campaigns and actually uh, I know that that many uh, people in this room have collaborated in those campaigns. We were actually invited uh, by Seriously to join Special Effect. Uh, they are a nonprofit in the UK and we have uh, one special day, and that day, uh, it's actually October 4th this year, uh, we donate one day of UK revenue to Special Effect. And what they do is uh, they make games accessible for people with disabilities. So really awesome. And we're actually super grateful that there has been a movement in the Finnish games industry to kind of do something together. And then there's the famous pledge 1%. You can donate 1% of time, profits, equity, or products. And uh, yeah, there are multiple ways to give back. Let's talk a bit more specifically. So it's not a, all about money. Uh, we have done lots of different things in Supercell and there's a lot of trial and error as well. Uh, we did some donations, like we did clothes drives for refugees, we did, um, you know, around employees' time and skills, we did workshops like with the finance team, they were coaching some of the startup refugees uh, business teams, for example. The legal team was coaching them as well. Um, then we did business validation events, like we hired our catering from, you know, the startup refugees team for different company events. Uh, we had tailors come into the office and everybody like brought clothes to get fixed in the office. It was a huge success. 
And um, yeah, we were able to give feedback to these business teams and say, hey, you know, ask customers, this worked, this didn't work, and just help them out when they're getting started. We have also used our office space for, you know, just giving it to nonprofits if you have that possibility. Just our endorsement, sometimes just backing people up, you know, they're doing amazing work and they just need your support. And that can also sometimes mean just giving them swag, you know, stickers or whatever they might need for, for a particular event. So there are many, many ways of doing it. Many learnings as well. We learned, uh, of course, make it optional. Sometimes we were like, hey, we only have like this amount of people. Did we do something wrong? And you know, ultimately, uh, lots of people would then come to me afterwards and say, I really love this initiative. I wish I could have gone, but something came up and I couldn't. But the support was there. Even if sometimes you only have a few people signing up, people do really care about it. Um, then we always say, get approval from your lead. We don't want to you know, mess with team dynamics, especially if a team is really you know, crunching like, they, they really need those two people that are maybe out <laughs> doing something else. So that was a huge learning for us as well, timing. And uh, a really awesome one is that people love to do something different as, uh, as a team. And sometimes when we do give back activities, we get people from different game teams and from different areas in the company working together, doing something that they find meaningful. And uh, the feedback has been amazing. So yeah. It's also really exciting to, to feel that we could do something as a community in Finland, that we could start that conversation, or continue, actually, that conversation. Um, and uh, I wanted to share um, the work of three local nonprofits that are super inspiring for us and that Supercell has been working with. So there's phoenix.fi. Um, I would encourage you to go to this website at some point when you have the time. Uh, they actually are the umbrella uh, nonprofit uh, under which Startup Refugees works. And their website is pretty cool because it lists so many possibilities to give back as an individual and as a company. And there's also the button of, you know, <laughs> let's just have a conversation. And they are really, really amazing people to work with. Uh, one of the possibilities is listed as Disco Star. So <laughs> I would say there are really exciting things to be done there. And if you want to hear more, just go visit their website. We are also working with 100. Um, 100 works around innovations in education. They publish 100 innovations every year. And we are working with them to select innovations around digital well-being that will be taught in schools all around the world. We're going to announce the innovations the first week of November, and we would really like to take that forward. So if anybody's interested, please do contact 100, contact me. Uh, we would really like to have more people involved. And then uh, one of my favorites, uh, John Nurminen Foundation, they, you know, they work towards uh, cleaning the Baltic Sea, and I think you know, the Baltic Sea is something that, that is so close to us and, and close to our hearts. We have all been to a beach in Finland where there has been a lot of algae. We have experienced it firsthand. It has to do with future generations as well. And um, they have this amazing campaign next year uh, with the Moomins and uh, who loves cute characters. I know I do. So I think they really, really need support. They need um, a lot more visibility than they currently have. They have a brilliant objective to, uh, to get 1 million euros that will go entirely to the organization. So I would say if you, know, if you think that you could collaborate in any way or you would like to be involved, please do reach out. And uh, yeah, so I want to thank you all for, for taking the time to, to listen. And um, I'm very happy to share more about our programs. I'm very happy to, you know, uh, have a meeting and, and, and share learnings, uh, even, you know, uh, give you more ideas or, or put you in contact with any of the nonprofits that I mentioned or any other. Um, and yeah, I, I think uh, the movement has started. I'm super excited that, that so many are already involved. And please don't be shy if you think that, you know, you want to do something, but you don't know exactly where to start. 
um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm always happy to, to also have that conversation. So thank you all.